everything else is working fine. We see a picture there of the exhaust. What is that exhaust from? Uh, that's a, a, a purge that goes through the main engines just prior to start, and they go through a chill-down process and uh, just preparing them to start. Now, one of the crucial parts we always point this out is a T minus 31 seconds when we get there. That's when the onboard computers take over, and at that point, the shuttle is essentially on its own. The engines are started, and the thing takes off without any help from the ground. That's exactly right. 31 seconds is another critical point. So that's actually the next critical point, isn't it? Now, we're going through a lot of checks at the moment. What are the things that they check in these last few minutes? Well, the uh, after the hydraulic power is up to full pressure, they uh, check out the aero surfaces. Uh, those would be used to help for uh, relieving the aerodynamic loads, and they gimbal the uh, main engine nozzles to make sure those are working properly. Now that we have a those and county fuel cell ground. You see the uh, terminated the big tank uh, vent arm being retracted, and they'll move that out of the way to uh, clear the way for a uh, clean liftoff. Now during the last uh, two minutes here, I think what we'll do is listen to the voice of NASA Control today. That is Mark Hess, and here we go. We're on two minutes and counting to liftoff. The maiden voyage of the minus discovery. One minute, 57 seconds and counting. Liquid hydrogen replenish has been terminated. LH2 pressurization to flight level now underway. Vehicle is now isolated from ground loading equipment. Less than two minutes away now from the liftoff of 41D and its six-man crew. The T-minus one minute mark. The ground launch sequencer will verify that shuttle main engines are ready to start. The external power supplies have been removed. They have done the engine gimbal test. That's when the nozzles on the main engines are moved back and forth for that, that movement they have to do once they clear the tower. Everything is progressing very smoothly. And we have about a minute and 19 seconds. Norm brings back some memories for you. You were on the Liquid fourth shuttle flight. Reported at flight pressure. Well, I was on the seventh flight, but the it does seventh bring flight. back some, That's some right. memories. Yeah. That it does, and I know they're in there now hoping that uh, nothing will occur to keep them from going this morning. This will be a seven-day trip, up on T -minus one 168 and hours and 53 minutes armed. to break it down. The soft water will be released at T -minus 16 seconds. The shuttle will return to Edwards Air Force Base next Monday after 112 orbits. And counting. SRB flight instrumentation recorders going to record. Still some fog at the Kennedy Space Center as we listen to the, the launch. External tank heaters. Good morning, I'm Lynn Sherr. Discovery is running smoothly on a borrowed computer, Minus borrowed from it. One second. We have a go for auto sequence start. Discovery's four redundant computers now taking over primary control of critical vehicle functions through liftoff. On board, Judy Resnick, the second American woman to visit space. T-minus 15 seconds and counting. Ten. We have a go for main engine start. Seven. Six. Five. We have main engine start. We have a cutoff. The engines have been shut off. We have a, an abort by the onboard computers of the orbiter Discovery. A major problem. This has never happened before. Mort, they mentioned that there is a computer problem on board. Of course, we don't know yet if it's the replacement computer that they placed in Discovery from Challenger, but it was a computer failure that caused this abort. OTC, see if I can verify push that down in engine one. We said start prep engine one. OK, all engines shut down. We listen in. The crew of six is not in any danger. All three engines have been shut down. All engines shut down. coach to uh, shut off the auxiliary power units, these, uh, which provide the hydraulic power to the orbiter. The shuttle discovery was second okay, from along. The engines were shut down. Yeah, GPC 5 to halt. 
Norman, at this point with the auxiliary power unit shut down, those are the units that provide process and uh, power to the hydraulic system. Should they be able to start this thing up again? Put everything back in the start it up, you get in trouble because the hydraulics furnish the power that's needed to demo those engines, and that's the only way you can steer the machine. So at this point, they would not want to start the engines. So we are at a point now that we definitely, despite this extended window till 10.08, there's no way we're going to have. I would think that with this sort of situation, you wouldn't want to launch today. By the way, the uh, whether the vehicle launches or not is under the control of the onboard computers from about T minus 9 or 10 seconds on in. If the machines don't come up to 90% thrust of big main engines within a certain period of time, it will shut them off and not issue the command to light the SRB. So at this point, I'd say I don't know whether it was the computers or something in the engines that didn't come up. But let's, uh, let's just review what happened. The countdown was proceeding normally. The uh, engines were lighted up. The mission was about to begin, and suddenly, where it was that the engines had been shut down and the mission was aborted. And we're going to uh, show you what happened, and let's listen into what happened just uh, moments ago. Ten. We have a go for main engine start. Seven, six, five. We have main engine start. We have a cutoff. After the three main engines on board the shuttle had started, there was that cutoff. And again, it did not appear that the six members of the crew were in any danger. They had been in the uh, cockpit of the shuttle Discovery for several hours when this occurred, just moments ago. Normally, it would appear likely that there will now be a delay of at least a day or two. Yeah, I think there's going to be a delay of at least a day. Uh, there are some, some constraints if you get with inside that five-minute window when you have to actually wait two days, but I guess we need to wait and see what they say. The Discovery has uh, not flown before. This was to have been its maiden voyage. The third of a fleet of four shuttles. Reconfigure systems on board the shuttle. Go ahead, Peter. Still no uh, word exactly on what the uh, problem was that caused an abort at the T-minus four-second mark. That is the time that is showing on the clock at this point. We did not uh, currently get an indication uh, for start of uh, one of the engines, which was the reason for uh, stopping the countdown prematurely, uh, just four seconds away from ignition. There's just no doubt about this being a uh, major disappointment for NASA, which has been trying very, very hard, particularly during this past year, to prove the reliability of the shuttle program. And uh, NASA had achieved some success in doing that. Getting everything in a safe configuration. And Norman, to, to clarify in terms, we, we, we are not sure at this point that it is a computer failure, but rather that the computer stopped the launch because it probably detected something wrong. Exactly. The computer monitors uh, a number of things, and one of the things it monitors, again, is whether those three engines come up, main engines come up to at least 90% thrust within a certain window of a few seconds, and if they don't, it'll issue a command to shut them down and not send the uh, solid rocket ignition command. And I think I heard something that uh, it didn't get an indication that one of the engines started, but I guess we'll listen some more and see. Go ahead, NTD. Yeah, does everything look normal uh, system-wise? Yeah, everything looks good right now. Safing is complete, and uh, we're, we're getting back to G9. That's uh, obvious uh, language uh, you for you. Safing means uh, they are just uh, making yep. certain that there is no uh, explosive danger to the astronauts uh, on board or to the crew that uh, works in the area. If you've just joined us, it's also obvious that the shuttle did not fly. The engines were lighted up, and the mission was suddenly aborted. GNC 9, Dallas, Format 44 with BFS and Op 0, standby. Okay, copy that. Thank you, DPS. Astronaut Norman Thaggart and uh, our reporter okay, Peter Van Sant are at the Kennedy Space Center. Norm, I don't remember this. Uh, it certainly did, hasn't happened in the uh, shuttle program. I don't remember it having happened uh, in any of the uh, space programs, do you? No, I don't think this has happened on the pad. Now, of course, we do uh, about 20-second engine firings on all these new vehicles uh, before they fly the first time, yeah. and that's the only time I've ever seen them start an engine and shut it down on the pad. And the test for Discovery went smoothly? It went very well, no problems. Based on your experience, what 
types of problems could cause what just happened here? Well, of course, uh, the pilot has an important thing that he does at five minutes starting those APUs. If he doesn't get them started within a certain time frame, that could stop the launch. Uh, various malfunctions in different systems can start it, and if all, again, as I said before, if all three of those engines don't come up to at least 90% power, that will stop the launch. And the APUs, again, are those auxiliary power units that power the hydraulics of the, uh, of the uh, shuttle right. and allow it to make that turn to get into proper orbit. So right. it's a very critical system. The shuttle was to have aimed for an orbit around the Earth of 199 miles high. As we said earlier on, it was to have been a seven-day trip, a launch from the Kennedy Space Center with a landing at Edwards Air Force Base in California next Monday, a 112-orbit flight. Among the tasks that the astronauts had to perform was the release of a, a communication satellite for the U.S. Navy. And then there was that solar wing that you talked about yesterday, Peter. 